Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. These two, nah, make that three mental midgets are about to implode under the force of gravity. Somebody call a hazmat team. We have got a major stupidity spill going on. Warning, severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. And trust me, I'm not kidding. Get out those oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range, and let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. Yeah, yeah, I like you, you doing that. Can you read out the first line on that 1.1, please, Rumpus? Therefore, mass has no visible effect on the body's response to gravity. Oh, dear. Ouch. I thought mass attracted mass. Ouch. 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 <laughs> Bend over, boys. You guys aren't going to be laughing when I'm finished. Limit relates to what? You only get your turn. I just, just tell you a short it. sentence. It's only a short sentence. So, in the case of being on the Earth where the gravity is not very strong, you're not in a black hole, you're not moving at the speed of light, then you, the general relativity, <laughs> there, the equations in Einstein's field equations, then become in the n limit, what's called the Newtonian limit, become Newton's equations because all those other terms go to zero. Finished. It's lovely. Now, I got your screen sharing. Nathan, you got this? uh yeah there's your screen sharing we're back at the tallish paper we don't need the tallish paper we need hillbilly blue balls non-experiment from 106 years out of date pseudoscience we're going to need einstein's field equations solving for hillbilly's non-experiment <coughs> kiwi doesn't waste any time diving head first into a mud puddle now does he you know kiwi rumpus was absolutely correct as a rule of thumb, there are three relevant limits that tell you when Newtonian physics is no longer applicable. Let me go over these for you. Number one, if the ratio of V to C where V is the characteristic speed of your system and C is the speed of light is no longer close to zero, you need special relativity. Number two, if the ratio of the product of the gravitational constant and the mass divided by the product of the speed of light squared times the distance involved is no longer close to zero, you need general relativity. And finally, if the ratio of the Planck constant to the product of momentum and the distance involved is no longer close to zero, you need quantum mechanics. Under any other circumstances, with very few exceptions, no one would ever use Einstein's field equations to analyze something like Cavendish. In fact, Einstein would be laughing his ass off at you right now for the mere suggestion of doing that. I think Bob the Science Guy got it right. Your education is at best questionable. You do understand that Einstein said everything in general relativity agrees with Newton. I don't really care what he said. <laughs> well, you just claimed it was contradicting Newton. It doesn't. And Einstein said it. Yeah, didn't. it does. We already went over no, that a number of times. Einstein so solve the equations now. Stop so the party. Einstein said that he Get in the no equations way up here, not polish his paper. Done. So you're 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 arguing with Einstein. So I'm now, asking you to do you what you claimed it did. That's what I'm asking you now. Do it. You're contradicting Einstein's own words. He said that Newton now. Was already. he was not in any way contradicting any of All right, Newton, well, Newton's. Well, we can stop sharing then because uh, he's just going to babble on about nonsense polish. Yeah, you just did this going nine time. You're claiming Einstein was contradicting you. Are you going to present completely. this or no? Yeah, okay. So here we go. I'm presenting now. I'm showing you. This I'm, is Polish's go through, paper, well, you dipshit. Do what? I missed you. interrupted me again. You want it with Einstein's field Oh, equation. my not God. Polish. We're not reviewing. Listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. I'd rather take not, your Billy go with Blue it. Balls. It's just non-experiment pseudoscience from 106 it's an years out of date. It's a great trap experiment. Trap. It's a great. QE, have you got any idea how bad it's going to hurt when I shove the pointy end of this thing up your ass? Take, take this paper off the, the screen. We want a clean of sheet of paper, and we want you to solve the equation. He's causing it seven shots. You can show him anything, Rumpus. QE wouldn't know the difference between a Christoffel symbol and a hockey stick. John, well get, done, get, John. Him to, get him to read that opening line on 1.1. 1. 1. 1. Sorry, I'm just math. talking right through you guys the whole time. You can't hear a thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, yeah I'm being over-talked. Thank you for pointing that out. Great. Excellent. No, he pointed out that you're over-talking everything that we're saying so that you don't have to respond to it. So while you had John just pointing out what we're asking for again, 
you said it's a great experiment. It's a wonderful experiment through every word he says. It's a great experiment. Like you're doing now. Experiment. Yeah, yeah, like Can you're you doing now. Can you read out the first line on that 1.1, please, Rumpus? Therefore, mass has no visible effect on the body's response to gravity. Oh, dear. Ouch. I thought mass attracted mass. Ouch. Ouch. I'm going to start. Ouch. <laughs> Ooh, Rumpus. That's, that's going to leave a mark. <laughs> that's going to leave a mark. So, as usual, ready, fire, aim. Eh, Sloppy? You know, you guys didn't bother to take any time to try to understand what the sentence meant. You just immediately assumed that the sleeping warrior had uncovered the Rosetta Stone. Let's read what you asked Rumpus to read. Therefore, mass has no visible effect on the body's response to gravity. All particles behave the same way in the same gravitational field. You mean to tell me you three idiots can't read that sentence and understand that all it's telling you is that all objects, regardless of their mass, will accelerate in a vacuum at exactly the same rate. That's that nuke-fangled idea that we've had now for about 400 years. So since you clowns apparently don't get it, let me explain to you how that works. Newton gave us the universal law of gravitation. Newton said force was proportional to the product of the masses divided by the square of the distance between their centers. And later on, we made that an equality by adding the gravitational constant, big G. Newton also gave us the second law of motion that says force is equal to mass times acceleration. We'll use G for acceleration because we're usually talking about the acceleration of gravity. We can set those two expressions equal to each other, and we end up with this. But you'll notice that there is a little m on both sides of the equation. So through one of those magical features of algebra, we'll simply divide each side of the equation by little m, like we do there, and we end up with this expression. Little g, the acceleration of gravity, is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth divided by the square of the distance from the center of the Earth to the object that's being accelerated. That's exactly what we just said. All objects are going to accelerate in Earth's gravitational field at the same rate. We can also rewrite the second law of motion, number two, as the acceleration of gravity is equal to the force of attraction between the Earth and an object divided by the mass of the object. Let's use some real numbers and see if this works. The mass of the Earth is about 6 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. The gravitational constant is about 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th. Earth's radius is approximately 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. And we'll use a test mass of, say, 100 kilograms. Plugging all those numbers in, we end up with a force of 983.2 newtons. Now if we want to know what the acceleration of gravity is, we simply divide 983 newtons by the 100 kilogram mass that we started with and the acceleration of gravity is approximately 9.83 meters per second squared. We can also calculate how quickly the Earth is accelerating toward the 100 kilogram mass. Again, the force is exactly the same. 983.2 newtons, but this time we have to divide by the mass of the Earth, 6 times 10 to the 24th, and we end up with an acceleration of 1.63 times 10 to the minus 22 meters per second squared, obviously a number that doesn't make any difference. Now think about this, boys. If this test mass had been 100,000 kilograms, instead of 100 kilograms, the force would not have been 983 newtons, it would have been 983,000 newtons. But when we compute the acceleration, we would divide 983,000 by 100,000, and we still end up with exactly 9.83 meters per second squared. Got it, dummies? Don't be so quick to declare victory until you understand what the argument is. And this is not an argument. This is simply a restatement 
of demonstrable fact. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, you clowns, when we say how stupid can you be, that isn't a challenge, it's a question. You guys don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Special shout out to the Patreons and the PayPals and for all the help you guys have given me on Cavendish. And I guess we'll catch you guys on the next one.